What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's DJ Rachel and I'm about to drop my latest gig log. I want to preface this by saying this is going to look a lot different than my previous gig logs. I think it's really important now more than ever that we keep our clients and our venues best interest in mind before posting content on social media. Specifically here in Connecticut, they just released new fines for not adhering to social distancing guidelines. For example, if you are a DJ at an event and it exceeds the indoor-outdoor allotted headcount, you could potentially be fined $250 for being there, regardless of whether you had anything to do with those attending. If you're caught without a face mask, that could be a hundred dollar fine and if you are the host of said event that exceeds the allotted headcount that's a five hundred dollar fine now i don't know where individual states are at or if anyone else has this going on in their particular area but the point here is we have to make sure that we're not posting content that can cause controversy for the venues the clients the guests or even yourself it's all about minimizing liability all that being said since i'm not planning on recording a lot of footage at this particular wedding, I figured this would be a great opportunity to take you through what I do to get prepared for my weddings. Now, I haven't DJed a formal event since probably early March sometime right before the pandemic hit. And even though throughout this whole downtime, I've been updating my crates, cleaning my gear, getting organized and staying in the game, so to speak, I feel that to get back in the swing of things, I need a little extra prep work to make sure that when I show up this Saturday, I'm going to smash this wedding. So this is a great chance for me to show you what I do to prepare, to feel confident and comfortable. And it's gonna be an interesting perspective. So as I said, there's not gonna be a lot of footage from the event itself, but I'm gonna take you throughout this whole entire week pretty much. I would love to know how you guys are preparing for your events, especially with all this unique circumstances behind what we're doing and how we have to do it to make sure that we're being safe and responsible. So with that, let's get prepping. First on the agenda is dialing in my lavalier microphones for the ceremony on Saturday. Now, right before quarantine hit, I picked up some Electro Voice gear, which to include a lavalier pack, which is the RE3 BPT. And I also picked up a RE97-2T low profile condenser microphone. <laughs> That's a mouthful. So I want to put this on their JP or who's ever doing their ceremony. I at least want to get my basic gain structures set. I am a firm believer of being really comfortable and familiar with all of your equipment before the event. So that's what I'm taking care of today so that it's error free and easy breezing on Saturday. So I actually have three microphones on. First is this one right here in the center. This is my Smart Mic Plus. This is a Bluetooth vlogging mic. This is what I'm using to record this video in the phone. Now on my left side, I have my Sennheiser EW100G4. And then on my right side, I am hooked up to the RE3. And I also have the RE97 headset on. What I'm gonna do is everything is hooked up right now to the Roland. I am literally gonna walk outside and mute one at a time, talk into it and see how it sounds and dial everything in on the controller. All right, my Evolve 50 is on and at about 12 o'clock. So I'm gonna walk outside with a little distance here. Step one is to unmute this bad boy and get this on. Oh, okay, there we go, and I already hear it. Now, I'm not sure what you hear in terms of the vlogging mic picking up this headset, but I hear myself very well with this microphone. So let me step a little bit more away. I am literally now in my street, and I still hear myself super clear. You know what, why don't we just do this from the neighbor's yard? I can still hear myself, all right. So let me read this while I listen to myself from my house. So the ElectroVoice RE972T is a low profile omnidirectional condenser microphone designed for demanding applications. I must look like a crazy person. I'm walking around with three microphones attached, just <laughs> walking around the neighborhood, reading instruction pamphlets. 
Now I'm going to walk you through what I do to prepare for my introductions. I do this almost every wedding. So I have finalized all the paperwork with the couple and I have their songs that they want to use for the grand entrance. The wedding parties coming into Get Ready by Pitbull and Blake Shelton. They want to come into We Found Love at a very specific point in the song. And then their first dance is going to be Perfect by Ed Sheeran and Beyonce. Now, I'm not going to have you watch me do this, so I've already done the work, and then I'm going to walk you through what I did. So typically, I will drag these songs up one by one and record them in full. This is to give me buffer room because I don't know how long it's going to take for the wedding party to enter and do their dances and whatever else they had planned. So once the song is done recording, I will then leave about an 8 to 10 second gap in between the next one that I record. And then again, I leave another 8 to 10 seconds, then we'll bring up their first dance track and then record that in full. So the finished product looks something like this. So now what I'm going to do is go back and set these hot cues. So obviously here's their first song. And then now since there's an 8 to 10 second gap, I can easily see where the second song is going to begin. And then here is their first dance and set that cue point right there. Now that I have all these cue points set, I will now show you what I do on the controller with all the right names and all the right songs. If we look at my controller, you'll notice four individual hot cues. Now these hot cues correspond with the pre-recorded track I made in Virtual DJ that contains all the songs needed for the introduction. Now for this particular event, it's a pretty straightforward introduction. I literally only have three songs that I gotta play. I have one for the wedding party, one for the actual couple, and then their first dance. Now these hot cues also color coordinate with the names that are on my tablet. So my tablet obviously has the names in order that I need to introduce them as well as the correct pronunciation. And then I color coordinate them to match what's on my controller. So all the names in red, get the red button. All the names in orange, get the orange button. I then record about 10 seconds of dead air with this button and then the final one will be their first dance. Now the purpose for this dead air is this allows me to kind of introduce their song of choice. It allows people to quiet down. We can redirect the attention and make sure that the photographers or videographers are ready for their shots. And then I can easily tap this button and bring in their first dance with ease. So I'm going to show you how easy this is to simply change our tracks and have a seamless introduction. The pacing of this is going to be real rushed because I'm just doing this as an example. Clearly you would leave time for people to applaud and cheer and all of that. The point here is, is to show you how easy it is to transition between each song with these hot cues. Kicking things off and making sure we all have a great time tonight. Let's give it up for tonight's event security, Ricky and Alden. I need everyone to get a little crazy as we welcome our favorite flower girl and ring bearer, Victoria and Brayden. It's definitely not a party without these two. Let's hear it for bridesmaid Raquel Dantes and best man Brandon Becker. Friends and family, it is that moment you have been waiting for. Please rise as we welcome our newlyweds. It is my honor and absolute privilege to introduce to you this evening as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Joel and Kimberly Paradis! Joel and Kimberly will now share their first dance as husband and wife, Dancing to Perfect by Ed Sheeran. It is literally that easy, folks. Now, actually, I'm going to get down here so I can talk to the camera. I get a lot of comments. Why am I using this mic now? Hold on. Let me turn this off. Okay, there we go. So I get a lot of comments about the no fading, you know, fading out, fading up, fading out, fading up. You can still do that. I am still doing this with one hand so I can hit the track, fade it down, hit the second one, bring it up. Fade it down, 
hit the dead air, and then go into their first dance, right? But the truth is, I typically don't bother with that step because people UPS are... All right, well, let's see. Let's see what UPS has brought us. While that video segment just got ruined, we might as well see what's going on. Let's see what I'm getting in trouble for now. I thought I'd be in. Hold on. What's here? What's here? What's here? <gasps> Where's my favorite human? No, I can't. He didn't. Hi, best friend. This is my best friend. This is our local UPS guy. I can't. He obviously don't care. Oh my God, this is so exciting. So, oh, my garage can't hold anymore. We're making room for this. It's not, it's not awful, I've seen worse. <laughs> See that? He's seen worse garage. Right. You gotta have what you gotta have. Right, I'm working. I'm doing things. Thank you. Right. My, Those things are huge. They're not. So my Electro Voice 30Ms just showed up. I am, I'm just so excited right now. I'm not excited. Oh my God, I can't believe they're here. You're not sorry, I want them out. Somebody <laughs> take her, please. I want to get in my- I'm not for sale. But back to what I was talking about before that awesomeness just happened, is you do have the ability to individually fade the hot cues before bringing in the next one. Now, the reason why I don't think that that's critical is because everyone is so hyper-focused on the wedding party and the couple themselves and cheering and clapping and celebrating, they aren't gonna notice you going from one hot cue to the next. The only thing that really should have a nice gradual fade is into their first dance. Other than that, do what works for you. But I literally do this every single wedding. We have to make sure we have the correct song selected. We have to watch our gains and volumes. I have to watch the timing to see, you know, when they get settled and people kind of slow their clapping down on when to start the next set of names. I mean, there's so much going on in that moment that anything I could do to make that process less stressful for me, that's what I'm gonna do. And honestly, folks, I haven't found a better way to do this as a solo DJ. Not only do I practice the introductions with the names and the tracks and all that, just to make sure it feels second nature, I also practice my welcoming message, just to make sure I have the name of the venue ingrained, I have the couple's name ingrained, and I'm really comfortable with what I want to say. Now, because I have to tweak this welcoming message a little bit because of the safety precautions that the venue wants us to observe and help enforce amongst the guests. I really wanted to make sure that the tone felt super upbeat and friendly and still really welcoming. Now I typically always use a great backtrack when introducing myself and welcoming the guests to the event. I feel it makes things sound a lot more polished and immediately commands attention and keeps things high energy. Now this particular couple, they love Frank Sinatra and that really classy essence. Now there are a ton of great tracks that DJs use for introductions to keep things high high energy with great dance tracks and things like that. I had to find a balance between that, something that had great energy, but was also kind of classy and sophisticated, also without being cliche. I did not want to use something like Uptown Funk or Billie Jean or anything like that. So while listening to XM Radio, I believe it was either on their Soul channel or their Motown channel, this song came on and immediately I got goosebumps and I knew that's what I wanted to use. And that was My Promise by Earth, Wind and Fire. All right, let's give this track a try and see how it feels and see how my little uh, mask PSA kind of blends into all of this. I really think that's the best way for me to get this out without sounding like a high school principal where we can keep it upbeat, fun, say what I gotta say and keep it moving. That's the goal here. So let's try it out. Good evening, family and friends, and welcome to the beautiful Amber Room here in Danbury, Connecticut. My name is DJ Rachel, and I'm going to be your host and party rocker for this evening. 
we have a wonderful celebration planned for you all. And on behalf of Joel and Kimberly, we are delighted to have you here tonight. We want to make sure everyone has a fun and safe time. So we kindly ask that whenever you leave your table to please grab your face mask and put it on. Now, without further ado, let's get this party started as we welcome in tonight's VIPs. Let me direct your attention to the main entryway as we welcome tonight's wedding party. I like it. And for anyone who's curious, I am using the ElectroVoice RE3 UHF bass with the ND76 handheld. This thing makes me feel like a rock star. I actually don't like talking on the microphone at all whatsoever. It is definitely something I am working on. It just, it makes you feel like a superstar. It has fantastic tone quality. I find it really easy to dial in. I almost never get feedback and I don't have any, well, I don't even know why I'm talking into it now because it's not on, but um, <laughs> that's just what you do when you have a mic in your hand. You just want to talk into it. Um, but honestly, I really don't get a lot of feedback. I have great range. I love this thing, but it just, it feels good in the hand. So if you're looking for an upgraded mic, I highly recommend the ND76 and the ElectroVoice RE3 Stellar Mic. Another big part of my gig prep is making sure that I have my safety essentials packed. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I got a whole entire list of that right here that I have to make sure that this goes in my gig bag. So to start, if you have not bought any, I highly recommend picking up some disposable mic covers. Now these came from Ben Stowe at NLFX. This was a hundred pack and I think it was like 19 bucks for a hundred of these individually wrapped disposable fabric mic covers. Oh, well now they're all on the floor, but that's okay. <laughs> Real quick, I mean, they're kind of self-explanatory, but I just want to point out that they're fabric. They're, they don't make any rustling noise. There's no plastic. They do not distort the sound um, really in any way that would be audible to our own ears. They fit nice and snug. And I was afraid that they were going to kind of look uh, ridiculous, but they're really not too bad. So this to me is an absolute no brainer essential um, to make sure that you have for the guests at the wedding. Now, I personally am keeping my own personal microphone that nobody else is touching. And then I technically have two other handhelds that I can use for toasts and speeches and whatever else is needed. And I will be handing out mic covers to any person who uses those microphones. Now, just to have a little fun here, I'm going to do a little experiment with these disposable mic covers. So here I have my microphone and then I'm going to take a tissue and actually um, kind of split this into two because I want it super thin. Actually, these are really good tissues. This is still kind of thick, um, but I'm going to split this into two thin pieces and then spray the microphone with water. I'm going to put one of these disposable mic covers on top to see how many uh, water droplets pass through. Now I am expecting some water droplets to pass through, number one, because people don't omit this much uh, spray, but also this isn't a completely waterproof cover. You know, this isn't like a plastic bag we're putting over the microphone. It's just a thin fabric mesh and it's to minimize the amount of water droplets that are obviously on the head of the microphone. So let's see how well it works. We got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me remove the mic cover and see now if we could see the results. Okay, definitely much drier. Now, I do see some water droplets, a few right there we could see, but we don't have that centralized uh, wet spot. And honestly, if that was a normal person talking and not a spritzer bottle, there probably wouldn't be anything on this tissue. I'm kind of taking it to the extreme. So these are definitely effective. And now that I'm touching this, uh, this is like soaking wet and it's almost completely dry in on the inside. So once again, I'm gonna stress that this is a essential that every DJ needs to pick up for their microphones if they're doing any private events where there's gonna be a shared microphone use between the guests. On top of those disposable mic covers, 
I am also using this uh, microphone hand sanitizer. This is by Gobi Labs. It actually smells pretty delicious. I believe this is apple flavored, right? Yeah, I got apple flavored. And all it is meant to do is to spray on a cloth and then wipe things down after people use them. It's not going to damage the equipment. It's not going to discolor anything or ruin the finish. It is designed for use on microphones and it's an alcohol based product. So it's going to get things uh, nice and sanitized for you. I am also bringing um, my own personal hand sanitizer. I'm sure the venue is going to have a ton of this everywhere, but if I just need a quick little score to something, I want to take responsibility for my own safety. I'm also packing uh, Clorox wipes to maybe wipe down some of my flight cases or whatever else I need at the end of the night. Again, I want things to be clean and let everybody see that I'm being as um, responsible as possible. And I'm also gonna be bringing extra face masks. So not only for me, but if one of the vendors forgot it or someone misplaced their mask or they need one in a pinch, I wanna be able to provide whatever I can to make sure that the guests feel comfortable and safe. So to me, there is no compromise with these basics. Just wanted to give you a quick look at the gear that I'm gonna be bringing with me today. Now, believe it or not, all of this stuff is in anticipation of a micro wedding. They're only expecting around 85 people. I'm gonna guess probably 60 or 70 are actually gonna show up because that's usually how that works. So for my main setup tonight, I'm gonna be using two Evol 50s. I got one there and there, and then I'm bringing two EV ETX 10 P's. One is gonna be for my ceremony speaker and I'm bringing the other one as a, just in case something happens to the Evolves, you gotta have backups. So I got my microphones. This is my uh, small wire case, small power cords, extra XLRs, things like that. This is my ceremony laptop and all my doodads in there. I have my Ape Labs can lights. I have my Ape Labs maxis in these soft cases and my coin bank. I'm actually gonna be trying out the uh, Chevet DJ Rotosphere Q3. They literally showed up yesterday. You can see that I was uh, playing around with it last night. I gotta get that packed and here's the remote for that. I'm also gonna be setting up my Novo Pro stands for a little extra flair, but this is what's coming with me today. I never thought I would be this happy uh, to actually load DJ gear. You wanna know how long it's been since I've DJed? I have spiders. So, sorry my man, it's time to get evicted. I need you all to mark this down on your calendars at DJ Rachel on Saturday, September 5th at 1.07 p.m. said that she is never going to complain about load in or load out ever again. So I was interested in getting some Chevet Rotosphere Q3 light fixtures. I've seen these on Facebook a lot, in people's DJ setups, and in a couple gig logs and stuff, and I was like, you know, I kind of dig the look of those, and they seem really simple, easy to set up, and have kind of a cool effect. Now, I've never used these, so I'm a little nervous about bringing these out today, simply because I haven't really had much experience to know how much light they put out, what kind of coverage they have, what it looks like on a totem. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna bring my JMAZ Aerospot 60 movers in case I don't love these or they don't really work for the space. Now, I don't wanna have a blank totem, so I gotta figure something out. So I think I'm just gonna bring both sets of lights and then figure out what I like when I get there. This is why I always leave enough time. All right, we're about to visit one of my local favorites. Honestly, I would put this top five pizzas in Connecticut. I am at Bruno's in New Fairfield. They have crazy gourmet pies. Wait till you see this. This is their barbecue chicken. 
honestly, this thing is a meal in itself. Got these two beads that won't leave my pizza alone. So I'm gonna share. Here guys, here's a little, a little piece of chicken. This is my decoy napkin so that they'll leave <laughs> my pizza alone. Here bees, here look, 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 look. Hey guys, look. Oh my God, it's on my hand. Apparently my decoy <laughs> piece isn't working. Wait until you guys see how easy loading this. I don't think this has ever happened in my entire life. This is unbelievable. So the event moved from indoors to outdoors. So everything is taking place under a tented patio. Literally, here is the back of my truck. I have to wheel down this path right here. And look at where I'm setting up right there like that's what 60 feet and then the ceremony is taking place right here i'm going to be setting up uh by this bench area there there's power there and then everyone's going to be standing kind of in front of that fountain and stuff guys another win for the day literally when have you had a load in <laughs> this quick and easy no stairs no rain no elevators this is as good as it gets folks this is a win for 2020. I'm definitely calling this a win for 2020. We're expecting, I think 60 guests they said, they invited 80, but I think they had 60 RSVP. So nice, small, intimate evening. They gave me the option to set up here, um, but I'm gonna wait until the event planner is here and they're done staging the tables so I can figure out the optimal spot. Now, what I am considering, there's an outlet right there. I think I'm gonna run an XLR behind that bench and put one of my Evolves there. figured I would kind of check in on this gig log. So I'm currently getting ready for my introduction and the toast and stuff. So I have my mic covers. I got one on here for me and I got more for the rest of the wedding party. I got my Gobi Lab sanitizer. I already spoke to everybody about how to put on this cover and you know, just proper cleansing and things like that so we can have a fun and safe evening. I can tell people want to party. They're bopping at dinner. So I think tonight's going to be a good night. It was crazy stressful for me setting up. Everything took a lot longer than I had thought, which is why I didn't even get to record as much as I had wanted to. Right now, I kind of just got to get my head in the game, rehearse the names for the grand introductions, and I will check back in. All right. Here's my first DJing during COVID tip. So DJs, now more than ever, it is so important to have a killer cocktail hour set. No more can we just do that kind of low key, stale old music. People need to be bopping and moving and grooving in their seats because my cocktail hour today, they're actually not allowed to walk around. They have to sit at their tables and the venue is bringing the hors d'oeuvres and drinks to the tables to minimize people walking around and that whole social distancing thing. If you haven't updated your cocktail hour set to include some serious bops, um, get on that because you are absolutely going to need it. So this is how I'm keeping things a little upbeat. I'm breaking out this song. Leon Bridges love the feel of this. We're going to get a little prints on in there. I am now pulling from my upbeat dinner folder. So once again, DJs, if you don't have one of these or sing-along folder, two of these are both really good during now just because again,
weekend, people are sitting and they kind of just want to bop and interact with the music. So energetic, good, feel good vibes is what I'm going for. So as I wrap up this gig log, let me give you my final thoughts. So for any DJ getting back to work, number one, remember, please be very considerate and conscientious about your social media posting and what may go over or not go over so well with your audience, the client, or the venue. Number two, definitely stock up on safety essentials and anything to project that you are being safe and responsible. Number three, if you haven't updated your cocktail hour slash dinner crates, you better do so. As I showed you, it was really important to make sure that the guests were entertained and bopping and grooving at their seats and standard cocktail hour and dinner music isn't gonna cut it, especially right now. Number three, definitely get that practice in. It actually took me a lot longer to set up than it normally does. I don't even know why. Give yourself a little extra time to make sure that you have enough time to kind of work with the venue. You might show up and the layout looks a little different because their guest list may have changed or maybe inclement weather has changed the layout of things. Definitely give yourself more time than you normally would. I'm happy that I did. Number four, if there's any type of mask requirements at a venue and you're asked to enforce it, it's really about finding that balance between being upbeat and professional, respecting the venue's wishes, but also not making the whole night sounding like a high school principal, as I said earlier in this vlog. Definitely find that balance and it is gonna take some practice because it's not stuff we normally say. That's why I set up in my garage. I went through my wording with my microphone probably 50 times before I felt at a place where it felt at least somewhat comfortable. So those are my quick tips about getting back into DJing during uh, this pandemic. And I hope that you all are having you know, safe and great events for whatever you have left for the year. And I really hope 2021 is so much different. So as always, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate the support and love. If you found this helpful or interesting, definitely hit that thumbs up button, give it a like, give it a share, comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I see the comment. And uh, everyone just stay well, stay safe and enjoy your events. So I'll see you next time.